What is good y'all welcome back to the airport welcome back to a brand new video we are here we are back with a brand new video for you guys and listen man in today's video we're going to be talking about five players that the Miami should go out and target through trade in the off season so we're going to be ranking you know this is a very very early list of five players from number five all the way to number one five being my least favorite option one being my favorite option out of the five and these five are a list of people that i kind of came up with after looking at you know who was likely to be traded who was in the rumor mills um a lot of these different things that i kind of took into account and all these five players are players who are either all-star caliber or, or i've made an all-star team before so there are no really role players on this list the reason for that is i don't really think the miami heat are going to be able to get back to that contender level unless they make like a big splash so because of that i don't really have any players around the edges that i think the miami can go out and get um that will really make a big difference so if you guys want to see a video about like role players guys who are like you know a little bit under the radar that we can go get Maybe I'll make a video about that later, but in today's video, we're going to be talking about five bona fide all-star caliber players that I do think the Miami Heat can go out and realistically get. Um, there's players on this list that you guys will, you know, see that you guys probably will not like. And I wanted to put some guys on here, but I just didn't know the certainty of them getting traded. Like Lowry Marketing was a guy that I wanted to include, but he was, uh, you know, he's, you know, had talks of signing an extension with Utah. So I don't think Utah is going to be looking to trade him anytime soon. Same with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. I know there's been rumors since the Suns lost their uh, series against the Timberwolves, but their their GM and owner uh, both came out yesterday and they were talking about, you know, how they're going to build around the three Booker, Bradley Beal and Durant and for next season. And they don't look like they're going anywhere either. So because of that, some of the names you guys will see, they aren't the best names, but they are names that are realistically available for trade. So let's get right into it. Leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. At number five, we have none other than Zach Levine of the Chicago Bulls. Now, the reason this is all the way at the bottom of my list is because Zach Levine, first and foremost, is coming off an injury. Um, it's a leg injury. So, you know, always have to be careful around that. You know, this is not, you know, a injury to be taken lightly now obviously i do think some a part of him shutting down for the rest of the season was in hopes of not being traded to detroit i think that's an actual real thing because there was a lot of steam and smoke behind zach levine potentially getting traded to the pistons um before the deadline last year or this year but he then you know um announced that he had an injury and he shut down his whole season so zach levine is coming off an injury so he's not played basketball in a in a little bit um, but Zach Levine is still a very talented NBA player. He's been rumored to the Heat uh, multiple times before. The reason he's very low on my list, you know, apart from the injury, is that I just don't think that it's really worth giving up Tyler Hero for Zach Levine. Now, obviously, I'm a, I'm in the camp of trading Tyler Hero. I think Tyler Hero shouldn't be on this team next season. But if we're going to trade Tyler Hero, it shouldn't be just to get him away. Like, we have to get a player that will actually make a huge difference to our championship aspirations next year. And Zach Levine... Although he's a really good scorer, he basically lacks in every other part of basketball besides scoring the ball, and his scoring is on and off at times. So because of that, he's all the way down at five, but he's still a really good player. If we got him without giving up here, that would be a miracle, but Zach Levine is number five on my list. At number four, we have none other than Brandon Ingram. Uh, Brandon Ingram is a guy that I do believe New Orleans is going to be moving in the offseason just because David Griffin came out and said, who is their GM, by the way, he came out and said Brandon Ingram, uh, he, nothing about Brandon Ingram particularly, but he said that the team is going to be shaken up because this build has been lasting for a couple of years and they have to make a significant change to shake it up. And um, especially after Brandon Ingram's poor performance in the a playoff series against the Thunder, there's been a lot of reports of Brandon Ingram potentially getting traded to the Miami Heat or to any other you know contender that could use a uh, punch. Now, Brandon Ingram, like Zach Levine, is a really, really supremely talented player. I do believe Brandon Ingram has a lot of potential. Um, I think Brandon Ingram has had a lot of opportunity in New Orleans, but he's never really found the footing or the consistency to take that next jump. You know, he's always you know been at the same 20 point per game, 23 point per game level where we've seen him have games where he's exploded for 40 50 but then we've seen games like the closeout game of the series against the thunder where he had eight points on two for 14 shooting so brandon ingram is a potential trade candidate for sure and i do believe he's a better he's a better option than zach Levine just because he gives us more size and versatility because he's a bigger player he's obviously not the you know like he's he's not the um the strongest by any means player but he's he's a very lanky skinny player but he's, he gives us length and um i do like his playmaking 
you know, at that position as well. So Brandon Ingram is an option. Would I trade Tyler Hero for him as a big coin flip? Again, I'd probably err on the, on the side of not because I think if we're going to trade Tyler Hero, it should be for a much better player. In my opinion, Brandon Ingram has not really shown enough for me. He's never made an all-star team ever. Like it's never been, you know, the Brandon Ingram that I hoped I would see out of Duke. Like Brandon Ingram out of Duke was a monster. I mean, people were comparing him to KD like, and I could see it. I could really see it because Brandon Ingram is one of my favorite players. He, he was, you know, a, a couple years ago, but unfortunately he just never has taken that second step to become an all-star superstar caliber player that I know he can be as a second overall pick. So regardless, he is number four on the list. Moving on to number three, we're about to get to a name that's probably going to get a lot of you guys to click off my video. So please do not click off my video. I'm just going to say like four, four warning, please, please just hear me out. Trey Young is my number three. Now, again, just hear me out, guys. Hear me out. I, I have a point to this. Now, I understand there's been a lot of people who are turned off by Trey Young. People do not like Trey Young's game. People think he's a foul baiter. People think he can't play defense. Now, Trey Young this year has sneakily become a lot better defensively. He's still not great because obviously with his size, he's never going to be a great defender. But I would say he's closer to average now than he is to being a bad defender. He's really, really improved his defense. The only thing that really rubbed me the wrong way about Trey Young was the efficiency. But I do believe in a, in a team like Miami, I think they can definitely get that under control. Now, the only problem with getting Trey Young is if you trade Tyler Hero for him, then you're stuck with Trey Young and Terry Rozier. And one of them will have to play off the ball. And I do think Terry can play off the ball, but he's definitely more of an on the ball player. So the fit is a little clunky, which is why it's at number three. Talent wise, I do believe he's worth trading Tyler Hero for, but the fit becomes a little clunky because then you have him and Rozier and it's like, then you probably have to send Rozier back to the bench. It's, it's a lot of things you're gonna have to do to make that work. So because of that, I feel like that's more of just like a name. It's not really the best fit to me, but if you're talking about a guy that's a viable option, Trey Young is a viable option just because of his sheer talent, man. He's a really, really, really talented player. Like he is, he is, he is a supremely talented player. And I do think that his playmaking can definitely unlock. Um, Dam out of buy has been phenomenal this season, but it can unlock him even more. I mean, this is a consistent guy who's been averaging over eight, nine assists every single year of his career. And Bam out of bio will thrive off of having a guy like Trey Young, you know, and then him and Jimmy can alternate playmaking duties. I like that. I do like that a lot. And he can definitely shoot the ball, but, um, Definitely not an off the ball player and neither is Terry Rozier to me, which is why it's kind of like a, you know, a clunkier fit. De though I do think Terry Rozier can play off the ball. He's definitely more of a Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is more of like an isolation, you know, give me the ball. Let me do my move and then step back, hit a, hit a three. Like he's, he's more of that type of player. He takes a lot of tough shots and stuff. So for that reason, I'm just not a huge fan of the fit, but I can't see it working because I think Spolster can figure it out with him. So that's why he's number three. He's in the kind of the middle of the pack because talent wise, he's definitely up there. He's like as one of the most talented players in the league, in my opinion. But the fit is like a little bit of a question mark. Um, so he's number three on my list. At number two, we have a guy that I don't really think a lot of people are talking about, man. And that's Mikhail Bridges. Mikhail Bridges is at my number two. And I am a very, very huge fan of Mikael Bridges game. Now, Mikael Bridges, I believe has been unfairly thrust into being a number one option for Brooklyn. He has never been a number one option to me. Now he had a stretch last season where he was traded from Phoenix and he looked really, really good for the, for the last, you know, um, stretch of games with Brooklyn. But this season, it's been a little bit of a, uh, a step down for him. He's averaged 20 points per game, which is not bad. And he's doing it on 44% from the field and 37% from three. Again, not terrible, probably average um, efficiency numbers. He's averaging five rebounds per game, four assists per game. But I do believe Mikel Bridges on the Miami Heat will be elite because he will be a player who can play without the ball. He can play with the ball. He's an elite mid-range shooter. He's an elite three-point shooter. Mikel Bridges is also an elite, elite, elite defender. I think he fits this team perfectly. Now, is he going to fix the problem of a late game, you know, score? Probably not fully. You know, I, I, I wouldn't put the ball in his hands down the stretch to make a play, but he can definitely make a big shot. He can definitely make big shots. And when you need him to on occasion, he can hit that pull up mid range shot. He's very efficient at doing that, which is why I believe Mikel Bridges is worth trading Tyler Hero for 
and, and, and maybe a couple of picks. And the only thing is, is Brooklyn going to be willing to move him? Now, last season, they had an opportunity to move Mikhail Bridges and they declined it. They decided not to. Um, I think a team was offering, I think Memphis was offering a massive trade package for him and Brooklyn still said no. So the only thing is, I don't know fully if Brooklyn is going to be committed to trading him, but I do think everything that I've seen out of Brooklyn, like this season, like a lot of people have been talking about and, 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 and rumoring Mikel Bridges to get traded just because Br Brooklyn is a team that needs to hit like a hard reset and Mikel Bridges is already 27 years old. So he's in the prime of his career. I wouldn't be surprised if he requested a trade from Brooklyn. I do think if he requested a trade from Brooklyn, New York would want to acquire him just because he has all his Villanova boys over there. But I don't think Miami's a long shot at all. I think Miami can acquire Mikel Bridges if he requests a trade or if Brooklyn wants to trade him fully. Uh, but I do think this is a rumor that could, you know, come to fruition. We don't know for sure. It hasn't been as, you know, publicly out there because the Nets are not really a team that has a lot of stuff out there about them unless they had like a, unless, you know, it was the period where they had KD and Kyrie, like, they were never a team that was really loud with their rumors and stuff. So um, I don't know for sure, but I, I am buying the fact that he could potentially get traded. So I'm, I'm going to have him at number two. And then num at number one, you guys know who it is, man. It's my boy Spider. It's Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is at number one now. Donovan Mitchell has a game tonight against the Magic. Um, I'm, I'm rooting for the Magic to win that series. Obviously, we, we got to pull for Florida, Orlando. Um, but not only that, I do think that uh, if the Cavs lose this series then they're for sure trading either Mitchell or Garland. I think something is happening for sure, 100%. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm definitely rooting for Orlando to win. But even if they, even if the Cavs win this series or if they win, you know, in the series, like, yeah, if they win this series and go on to play Boston, I think they're losing in the second round anyway. So to me, it doesn't really make much of a difference. I think Donovan Mitchell, regardless, is going to ask out or he's going to probably seek a trade. He just, he just never wanted to be in Cleveland, in my opinion. It's very similar to the whole Dame thing. Um, Donovan Mitchell wanted to be in New York. He also, I guess, kind of wanted to be in Miami as well. But Cleveland decided to trade for him. And, you know, now I don't think he's happy in Cleveland. I mean, it came out last uh, in the last part of the this season where the reports were coming out that he's going to, you know, um, request a trade or not sign an extension with Cleveland. So because of that, there has been a lot of smoke about Donovan Mitchell. And I am buying that just because, again, this is never a destination he wanted to go to. I mean, no disrespect to Cleveland, but it's Cleveland versus Miami or Cleveland versus New York. Like, what are you picking? I'm not picking Cleveland in any of those situations. So, yeah, I'm 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 definitely buying the Donovan Mitchell smoke. I, I, I do think there are you know there is validity to the fact that he he is unhappy there. Uh, that's what I think. That's what I believe. I, again, I'm speaking with zero sources right now. It's just my opinion, and I do think fit wise, talent wise, he's perfect, man. He's perfect for this team now. Um, it's really about whether the Cavs will accept Tyler Hero or not, because I think the Heat would offer Tyler Hero to the Cavs if if, if Donovan Mitchell really did ask out. Um, Donovan Mitchell is a is a bucket man, and I know a lot of people will be concerned about you know him not being like I heard I had some people saying he was like not proven in the playoffs or this or that. Donovan Mitchell is a very good playoff player. Do not get it twisted, man. Donovan Mitchell is a very, very good playoff player. Sneakily, too. Like, it hasn't been really put out there. But I don't know if you guys remember in the bubble when it was him and Jamal Murray going at it. Like, he was he was hooping. He was hooping, man. I, I definitely like his playoff stats a lot. I mean, career-wise, regular season, he is a 24-point-per-game score. In the playoffs, he ups it to 27. And he ups his rebounds and assists as well from four each to five each. So he is a playoff riser. And that one year in the bubble where it was him against Utah in that series, I mean, it was him against Denver in that series. He averaged 36, five and five. And that was with Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley as their, has his second, third option. Like that wasn't with any stud next to him. Now, Rudy Gobert is a stud. But I'm talking about offensively as an option. So, yeah, I mean, he is a ridiculously good playoff player. The only really bad series he has had, in my opinion, is last year where against the Knicks, he averaged 21 points per game. But I do think apart from that, he's been elite in the playoffs. So he is elite in the playoffs to me. He is very close to elite in the regular season as well. I think he is a very, very good fit in Miami. He he has a relationship with Bam. Um, they go back, obviously drafted in the same class. So I just think it makes the, it makes the most sense. And it's, it's definitely something you shouldn't overthink. I do think that this is the perfect trade candidate for Miami. Um, 
and and yeah, I mean, I don't really see much more to it besides it's Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is the guy to me that the Heat have to go target. Like, I don't think I, I mean every every anybody else on this list is fine, but Donovan Mitchell makes the most sense. You know, we have insiders like Mark Stein saying that there's a growing belief that Cleveland will be forced to trade Mitchell if they can't extend him. Um, you know, not only does Donovan Mitchell share a tight relationship with Bam Adebayo, he is also very close and he is his, his mentor and idol is Dwayne Wade, the guy he models his game after. So again, it just makes too much sense to me. Like even in that commercial where the NBA did it with the hoop bus or whatever, Donovan Mitchell was wearing Dwayne Wade's jersey in that commercial. So yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's very, very, very evident to me that if Cleveland and Mitchell do not agree on an extension, he's going to hit free agency next summer. So I think Miami can trade for him and then extend him to lock him up for the future. And that can be the future, Don and Bam. And I think when you have Woj coming out and saying that you have uh, Miami who's going to be trying to acquire a star who's on Bam's timeline. I mean, what is more Bam's timeline than acquiring a player who's drafted in the same year as him? So to me, this is this is really a no brainer to me. I think that, you know, everybody else on this list is OK, but I feel like if I had a clear cut number one and head and shoulders above all the other options that you could potentially trade for this offseason, it would be Donovan Mitchell and Donovan Mitchell only. Now, we'll see what happens again. We still have to wait for the exit interview, which I think is going to be later today. So I'll probably will do a video on that. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens, man. Let me know what you guys think about these trade candidates. I'll see you later as always. Have a nice day.